is a motion to approve truck tarp purchase and installation to the lowest responsible bidder meeting specifications to a butylin 701 northwest wood avenue toledo ohio 43607 in the amount of seven thousand eight hundred and seventy six dollars and this is funded through the dpw operating account motion support okay i have a motion by councilwoman winton supported by councilwoman ramick is there any discussion if not all those in favor say yes yes, yes. all opposed say no just a quick note we don't need the address of the specific <laughs> business uh, 6.14 is a motion to approve the payment in the amount of $28,076 to Wayne County Alliance of Downriver Watershed. Funds provided from major and local accounts. Motion to approve. Support. Okay, I have a motion by Councilwoman Cross, supported by Councilwoman Winton. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chair, I have some questions. Councilwoman uh, Pat? The due dates on here are a little confusing to me. Um, it says it's due 6-1-2020 and 9-1-2020, but the invoice says 5-1-2020. Um, so I'd, anybody have any answers to that? Uh, that would be, I believe, key, but that may be adjacent, too. I'm not sure. And if they were due back in May, why are we just getting them now? Good evening. It's a typo. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the receipt uh, or their invoice is 531. So what is the actual due date? There was, if you look, this was the, the invoice, but it it's their typo, not our typo. If you keep reading, it says due 91 on the invoice. And the problem is, is they don't send the invoice directly to us. We've been getting the invoices through Wade Trim, and I've been asking for the last four years to send it directly so we can be more timely. And sometimes they give us an invoice, and they don't have even an explanation or a cover sheet, so I won't pay it until I receive those things. So they're a collection agency, the county for the ADW. Which so is the actual due date was 9-1? We already made one payment. It was approved through council a couple months ago, and now this is the second payment. This is for a year. And the, and the payments have increased because <laughs> I believe that uh, in the past that we were using the saw grant to part, pay for part of the, these fees, and now the saw grant's expired, we are responsible for the entire fees. Okay. I see do, I see do 9-1. No. Yeah. It says do 9-1. Okay, okay, but we, we, we don't accrue any penalty or anything? No. Okay. So again, it was their mistake on this invoice, not ours. That is correct. Do you have any more questions? Thank you. Okay. Is there any other questions? Okay, if not, all those in favor say yes. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. Item 6.15 is a motion to approve the rate renewal with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan Medicare Advantage Plan for the period of January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2021. Motion to approve. Support. Okay, I have a motion by Councilwoman Cross, supported by Councilman Remick. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor say yes. Yes. All opposed say no. Motion carries. Item 6.16 is a motion to approve the rate renewal of Health Alliance Plan HAP Senior Plus for the period of January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2021. Motion. Support. Okay, I have a motion by Councilman Remick, supported by Councilwoman Winton. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor say yes. Yes. All opposed say no. Motion carries. Item 6.17 is a motion to approve PGA National Pepsi Beverage Program Agreement between Lakes of Taylor Golf Club and Taylor Meadows Golf Club and PepsiCo Sales, Inc. for a period of October 18, 2020 through October 18, 2025. Motion. Support. Okay, I have a motion by Councilwoman Winton, supported by Councilwoman Croft. Is there any discussion? M Mr. Chairman. Councilman Mazzura. Was this being renegotiated or? I think it was brought, but then it was canceled at one time. Mr. Solomon, if you want to come up and answer that. I think this was 
taken off our agenda yeah, a couple weeks ago, I think, because there was still some negotiation going on or something. I believe Ian told us that. Well, both is true. Uh, there were, the document, the date on it was incorrect, but we are currently working with Pepsi. This is to, and Ian can probably elaborate to it, get our machines working because we have some issues with some of our machines, but we are currently working with them and bundling a lot of the stuff from the TSX, the golf course, like we always have these one-off contracts. So early indications is we're getting about a 15% margin increase by doing this. And also, uh, again, it, it's still a negotiation, but a substantial amount of marketing money to be able to use at the TSX. So uh, this stands at it, to, it, it, it. This stands on its own. There is negotiation going on. Yes, through the chair, um, because we're golf courses, we fall into this PGA national brand. So there's, you know, the PGA encompasses all these golf courses throughout the country. So actually the buying power would be, we get a better deal than we would falling in with the TSX and other parts of the city. Okay. Just specific to golf courses. Sure. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Okay, thanks guys. If not, all those in favor say yes. Yeah, yes. All opposed say no. Motion carries. Item 6.18 is a motion to receive and file TIFA approval of Detroit Region Aerotropolis Development Corporation annual dues for a fiscal year of 2021 for the amount of $25,000. Motion to approve. Support. Okay, I have a motion by Councilwoman Cross, supported by Councilman Bazura. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chair. Mr. Sullivan. Um, I have Christopher Girdwood Ger Ger here. He's the executive director of Aerotropolis. Uh, also, I think it was really important to keep the, 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 the council here updated what's going on. He can give everybody a little bit of update what's been going on in Aerotropolis, or he has a handout, whichever your choice, Councilman. Okay. okay. So if you guys a handout sufficient for me. I, I wouldn't. But if you, yeah, if you want to come up and speak, so, like especially if something's going on in Taylor. As well, though. Yeah, hand out as well. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Uh, this is just a quick 15 slide presentation. It's a year for me on the job. Uh, I've been gone for 11 years. I'm born and raised in Michigan, but spent some time in Washington, D. In uh, Washington, D.C. and Los Angeles. It's good to be back home. I'm a two and a five year old, and uh, from Sterling Heights originally. Uh, my office is in Romulus, and I go to Taylor quite often. Uh, so, just a quick primer on the Aerotropolis. From a legal standpoint, it's an arm of the state, so it's a state government entity. It's referred to as the Next Michigan Development Corporation. And under the Rick Schneider administration, there was about seven Next Michigan Development Corporations that were established. So there's one in Traverse City, and it works to promote the wine and the tourism industry. There's one on the I-69 corridor that works to promote trade between Canada and Michigan. Here, Aerotropolis was designed to promote regional collaboration between the four communities and the airports. And so DTW and Willow Run on the next slide, DTW is the 18th busiest airport in North America, and Willow Run uh, services about a half of a billion pounds of cargo annually. And so when you think about the economic engines of the airport, the goal of Aerotropolis was to work with you all in the communities so they grow together. And so uh, when we look at the targeted industry clusters, and this is on um, slide five, uh, what you see is that transportation, distribution, logistics, advanced manufacturing, and next generation mobility. And I want to talk about next generation mobility towards the end of the presentation because that's where the city of Taylor is, is leading uh, not only the state but in the nation. So on slide number six, Aerotropolis under uh, Governor Rick Schneider was granted some very unique incentive capabilities. Uh, and so Aerotropolis has the ability to uh, stack on top of TIFA and LDFA. And so you can utilize uh, incremental increases in property tax to do some very cool redevelopment initiatives in your city, and I was at the Taylor Sportsplex just two weeks ago, and I know that was TIFA funded. 